Well, as we, as I had uh, said earlier, uh, as soon as we have more to announce. Uh, Well, as we, as I had uh, said earlier, uh, as soon as we have more to announce, uh, we will ask for you to come. So, sandali lang we have a video briefing. We, as I'm sure you know, um, nakakatanggap na ako na mga congratulatory messages from different heads of states. Nakausap ko na si, ang unang nakatawag sa amin ay yung uh, uh, U.S., the President uh, Joe Biden, and China, President Xi. Uh, nakausap ko na yung also the uh, uh, Japanese Prime Minister Kishida. I even spoke to the <laughs> outgoing Prime Minister of Australia, uh, uh, P.M. Morrison, uh, who, is, uh, who just went through an election also. So, marami na talagang nangyayari, marami na talagang, uh, 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 we are already being recognized. This new administration is being already recognized. Mukha namang walang problema sa recognition. Uh, maybe the uh, comfortable margin that we enjoyed uh, during the, uh, the election is, uh, has, a, has a part to play with that. Uh, in, co in the... In connection of that, today I met with uh, four, well, three ambassadors: uh, the ambassador of South Korea, the ambassador of Japan, uh, the ambassador from India, and now the head of station of the United States, uh, where we were able to discuss many of the things that uh, uh, that how we how we are going to handle uh, the next. Uh, few years in terms of our relationship with the different countries. Ang uh, aking lang laging pinapaalala sa kanila, sinasabi ko, palagay ko, sa pandemya ito, ang recovery ng lahat natin ay hindi kakayanin ng kahit isang bansa, kahit gano'n kayaman. Kailangan the partnerships will be the one that will bring us to uh, keep the global economy at least uh, uh, as stable as is possible and will give us the opportunities for us to take advantage of the opening of the global economy. So uh, I think that the, we were all in agreement that that is going to be the situation. Uh, specifically in Japan, we, uh, with the Japanese ambassador, we spoke about uh, some of the uh, ODA projects that uh, JICA ODA, uh, that possibly we can uh, pursue at marami siyang ipinakita sa amin na mga possibilities uh, in terms of infrastructure, in terms of transportation infrastructure, um, in terms of uh, uh, the usual horizontal infrastructure and also of employment um, where we would like, he would like to see an increase, Japan would like to see an increase of employment of Filipinos in Japan. Uh, so that, that uh, we will pursue that, uh, those opportunities further. Uh, with the, the ambassador with, of South Korea, we uh, have namin yung um, IT, uh, digital communication, because uh, South Korea is still considered to be one of the best uh, in the world when it comes to IT. And I said, kung saan matulungan mo kami siya, matulungan mo kami diyan. At uh, pinag-usapan din namin with, South, with the uh, South Korean ambassador, napag-usapan din namin um, yung offer nila at yung nakapunta na rito ng mga expert na nuclear power para tignan ang Bataan Nuclear Power Plant para makita kung ano ba ang maaring gawin. Pwede pa bang ituloy o kailangan na magtayo ng bago? Uh, what are the things that we will have to do? So, binuhay namin ulit ang diskusyon na yun. Although they have come before, we will now study their uh, recommendations and their findings and we will see if we can still apply. Because as, you, as we have been talking about all through the campaign, isa sa pinakamalaking problema 
is the supply of uh, power. Uh, if we are going to industrialize post-pandemic, we are going to go to rapid industrialization when the power sector must be ready for that. And the, the problem with the, the problem with the, uh, in the power sector is that but laki ang lead time. Kahit na siguro yung pinakamaliit na planta, three years yan. Minimum, three to five to seven years. But uh, kahit na hindi namin, hindi aabutan ng administrasyon ko, uh, we still have to start, we still have to start somewhere. So we spoke about, uh, uh, about that. Um, and uh, some of the other uh, security concerns for the region. Uh, and siyempre, uh, North Korea is a, is a continuing concern to South Korea. Uh, and the stability in our area is something that uh, we had also discussed. With the uh, ambassador um, from India, we hit upon, uh, uh, he had three very interesting uh, programs that he, they are instituting in India that I think might be applicable uh, in the Philippines. And we again agreed to go into uh, these uh, different areas uh, in greater detail. Uh, number one, of course, is agriculture. Uh, we have a lot, we can learn a lot, especially from India, uh, not only in the techniques of agriculture, but also in the protection of, farm, for, of farmers and how to bring the age average age ng of the farmers down from what it is now in so, uh, ko 57 50, 56 57 ang average age ng ating mga magsasaka at uh, walang pumapasok ng mga kabataan and the, one of the solutions that was proposed is that it will kung gawin nating high tech yung ating uh, agriculture magiging interesting para sa mga mas bata because the, with the new technologies, we will need young people anyway. So we started talking about that uh, and the protection of the farmers. I also, because it is one of the conclusions we arrived at uh, during and after the pandemic, uh, after the first uh, hit of the pandemic, yung uh, gamot, and we know that India is one of the largest manufacturers of generic drugs. And I think I said we, if we could go into partnership para magkaroon ng production dito sa Pilipinas, turuan nyo kami what is the manufacturing technology, what are the necessary uh, uh, things that have to be put in place. Is there new legislation? Would we have to put up a, a new agency or we will have to do training of uh, those of uh, yung mga nasa atin na natao. Uh, so, the, but in the end, to be able to provide at least the basic, yung mga basic lang ng mga gamot uh, na dito na nang gagaling. Uh, marami na tayong ginagawa pero marami pa rin kulang. And kaya naman siguro, I have no doubt na yung ating mga, mga manufacturers dito, eh, kaya naman nilang gawin yan. Pero we will get advice because uh, may experience ang India. Kaya siguro naman eh, marami, silang, uh, uh, marami silang maipapakita sa atin. Uh, titignan natin kung babagay dito sa Pilipinas, baka maka-adapt tayo and we will, uh, we, can also, we will also be able to pursue that. The other very interesting uh, area that we talked about with the Indian Ambassador was their programs in India for microfinancing. And this is again because of the SM MSMEs that we are hoping uh, to, um, to assist. Uh, to bring back, to create more jobs, uh, to give, bring people back uh, their livelihoods. Meron silang statistic na nagulat kaming lahat. Eh, sinabi, eh, 70 pesos pa lang, 70 pesos pa lang pwede na silang magbukas ng account doon sa kanila. Napakaliit lamang, kaya na nila. Uh, so sabi namin, sabi ko, Pake, will you please send me material? because I'm very, very interested in that. Kasi mabusisi ang trabaho na yan. India has always been a pioneer in terms of microfinancing. Um, and, but they, I did not, they have taken it already to this level na kahit ganun lang kaliit ang puhunan mo, pwede ka na magkabanko, pwede ka na magkabank account, pwede ka na maghanap buhay, pwede ka na magnegosyo. And with the, well, with the, uh, uh, 
with uh, the American charge, um, well, <laughs> as you can imagine, pag uh, kausap natin ang Amerikano, eh, marami talaga kami pag-uusapan. Uh, but uh, primarily, uh, one of the uh, first uh, subjects that we came upon were the assistances that uh, the United States is offering to mitigate climate change in uh, in different countries. At, uh, very active sila. They, they want to take a leadership role in uh, the mitigation of the effects of climate change of global warming. And I said, I, it is very, that became, nung nakita ko sa brief na yun ang kanilang ginagawa, ay nakita ko kagad kasi napakataas natin, top three tayo sa, at risk uh, sa climate change. So that's, uh, that is immediately, uh, uh, that is immediately of great interest. Security concerns, of course, have always been a big part of our relationship with the United States. Uh, but then the additional, um, it is very well. Of course, we will welcome any, any assistance uh, for the economy that we, can, uh, uh, that we can get from the United States. But I thought, I said, I think that not only a dependence on uh, aid from uh, the United States, but also in trade, trade not aid, balik pa rin tayo doon, trade not aid. And uh, so to open the, open the, uh, the, again, the government, the bureaucracy, this administration, to the possibilities of private, uh, private partnerships, joint venture um, with it from the Philippines and with the American. Marami naman tayong history sa ganyan. Marami tayong nang trabat na nagbubukas dito na kumpanya na na American uh, since uh, long for a long time now. So that is a well-established uh, root or role that we have uh, the, the part of our relationship. Siyempre, security concerns, pinag-usapan namin the, uh, the, the uh, return or the re-signing or the extension of the VFA agreement and how it has to be redefined for the near future with the changing, with the changing uh, situation around the world, especially in our region. Siyempre, yun ang ating primary concern. Uh, and uh, so if we talked about some new technologies that might be available to us uh, in terms again of power generation but which as as there uh, ang usapan talaga nasa climate change napunta kasi naman climate change uh, climate change uh, na pupunta yan sa lahat ng sektor eh kaya tayo uh, nang uh, napunta sa power napunta sa agri napunta sa iba't ibang uh, iba't ibang sektor so that is uh, the extent of my my uh, discussions with the ambassadors today, uh, with uh, some of the diplomats that they, that came to see me today. Uh, we have this is not the first time I've met with him. Uh, this must be about the second, third, or fourth time already. Dahil nung kampanya palang, marami nang pumupunta nagtatanong ano ba talagang iniisip mo, ano yung binabalak mo. And this is just to to further the discussion so that we get into. Uh, actual practical detail, hindi lang yung mga uh, vague ideas of what can be done, uh, but really to dig down and to see what can be done, what needs to be done para mag-succeed itong mga program na ito, what do we have to do in the Philippines, what can we uh, expect uh, from our partners around the world. So that's basically it, um, uh, except for <laughs> Uh, some of, I think the yung hinaantay nyo talaga yung mga appointment. Yes. <laughs> well, uh, uh, na ano tayo ni ano na on the our our, our friend uh, the incoming DOJ secretary has already announced it himself. So sa segunda ang kuna lang siya that the uh, boying Remulia, I have asked him to uh, join the government uh, as. Uh, um, uh, DOJ, the Secretary of the Department of Justice. Uh, I think he will be very good. He has, uh, as you know, he has a, a good, uh, a great many years of experience in government, number one. And he's, he is, what many people do not know is that he's actually a very, very good lawyer. Uh, and so I think he will fit uh, very nicely into the, uh, into the DOJ. Uh, I guess we can talk about our last meeting already. 
uh, I had over lunch uh, the former Secretary Laguesma of Dole uh, and Toots Ople um, to talk about the labor segment, both Dole and the new Department of Migrant Workers. Uh, so uh, our new um, uh, my nominee, my nominee for Dole is going to be um, is going to be the former secretary, former secretary Laguesma, uh, to return, and we've asked uh, help from Toots Ople to uh, organize already, start organize already uh, the Department of Migrant Workers, so that when the time comes that we are mandated to start operations, uh, we are ready. Hindi na tayo mag adjust hindi na tayo magpapalit. Kaya ang naging uh, concern ko is eh, mahirap naman kung magbabago tayo two years from now, babaguhin natin dahil magkakaroon ng migrant worker, eh, Department of Migrant Workers, ay eh, kung ititigil pa natin ang services bago tayo nag-organize. So sabi ko, para hindi matigil ang functions, uh, ay ngayon pa lang, umpisahan natin Umpisahan na natin pag-isipin, pag-isipan kung ano ang gagawin natin para pagdating ng panahon ay mabilis na. The Department of Migrant Workers from the day one uh, will immediately be uh, 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 operational and performing its function. Uh, that, that's really my general policy sa so lahat na ito, uh, is to fix policy as early as now. Um, uh, so that when the time comes that we are giving now our nominations to the CA ay mabilis na ang magiging proseso at kahit na hindi pa ma-confirm yung mga iba hindi pa natapos ang confirmation process ng mga iba ay uh, ang mangyayari ay, ay, ay ma marami na tayong uh, na naintindihan na na mga tao natin, the cabinet, the secretaries, and uh, the rest of government, kung ano yung kailangan gawin, what is expected, what the timetable uh, has to be, uh, so that we can immediately start work uh, as soon as uh, as soon as uh, the term the, the 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 term of the next administration began begins. I have also tapped an old friend. Uh, uh, who also was uh, formerly in this position, Arce Balisakan, who was our former NEDA. And uh, I've asked him to return to NEDA. Uh, I've worked with him extensively in the time that I was governor. Uh, we have very similar thinking in, uh, in that regard. I know he's very competent. I know his, uh, uh, his policies are policies that uh, um, will be to the betterment of our country and for employment, uh, for the development of the economy. Uh, Nag-uusap kami ng ilang oras at uh, mukha namang tumutugma ang aming pag-iisip uh, tungkol sa approach natin dito sa mga darating na ilang taon when it comes to the economic managers. I know that, uh, siyempre, ang magiging ang magiging uh, Ang punot luro talaga na susunod na administrasyon is the economy. Kaya alam ko yan, inaabangan na talaga ninyo. Uh, allow me and maybe a few more days uh, for me to be able to announce formally who will be part of the... Well, we, the, the labor sector is going to be very much part of any redevelopment and recovery of the economy. Uh, so that's part of it. NEDA, obviously. Uh, I the in, sa NEDA, Having come from governor, eh, sabi ko dapat ibalik natin yung, tunay, yung primary function ng NEDA. Uh, NEDA, you have to remember, is the National Economic Development Authority. And the process has always been that the provincial development councils will forward their recommendations to the, to the regional development council, which will forward their recommendations to NEDA. Hindi na nasunod yun. Uh, kailangan natin maibalik because again, being a proponent of local government, we need to hear from local governments so that we are our what we do at the national level is relevant to the needs uh, and the concerns of local government. Uh, uh, so that's it for now. I think that uh, 
uh, I think that that's uh, that that's enough to get, to be getting on with. We're working very hard on the other departments, and dahan dahan naman, dahan dahan naman. We are we are beginning to fill the positions. I still have to talk to them, uh, some of our proposed nominees, and we have to understand that nagkakasundo kami sa polisya. Kasi kundi naman sila mag-agree, eh, mahirap naman masyado yun. Uh, so we will, we, will, uh, we will continue to discuss with them. And should they agree, uh, umpisahan na namin ang mga planning para, para diyan. So um, I want, <laughs> technically talaga, uh, dapat after proclamation itong mga announcement na ito. Kaya, uh, pero uh, I'm, I know na maraming, maraming nag- uh, hindi na makapagantay dahil nga napaka importante itong mga appointment na ito but allow me uh, the luxury of a few more days uh, and uh, we will be able to announce more at the moment syempre nakaabang na kami sa canvassing uh, my best information is that uh, uh, the canvassing will, will proceed rapidly and uh, I told the uh, um, I told the speaker and uh, the leadership of uh, the House and of the Senate that I'm on call. Kung matapos sila, the, kahit anong oras, kahit hating gabi, I'll be happy to go there to be, to be proclaimed. Uh, so that's, the, that's what we are uh, busy with now. Uh, and uh, that also explains to you bakit ako naka-Amerikana. Uh, dahil nga, uh, mga kaharap ko, ang baso niya. Na ibang, na ibang look namin dito sa headquarters at uh, uh, hindi na kami nangangampanya at uh, we are now back in the office, uh, working in the office. So uh, I'll, I'll leave that with you for now. At, uh, well, I'll take a few. Sa inauguration po, Mr. President, are we going to tell this sa grandstand po? Hindi ka, because nga na, na may hospital eh. Eh, ginagamit pa eh. Hindi naman natin pwedeng ilipat yun. Eh. Kailangan pa dun. Manila government and even the DPWA Secretary Roger Mercado sa No, I, I don't think there's any need uh, to, to go to that. But yun lang, we're now looking for an alternative. Uh, we... So out na po yung uh, grandstand? I think for now, unless something will change, uh, change uh, radically, uh, we we cannot use Kirin Grandstand. I would have, mas maganda para sa akin, gusto ko doon, dahil yan ang tradisyon eh. Pero, eh, marami talaga yung pinalitan yung pandemic. Wala tayong magagawa. Sir, under your administration, uh, will the Philippines participate in the Indo-Pacific Economic Framework? Yes, we talked about that. Uh, yes, we are very much involved. We are very much involved. And we are considered very much an important member of that uh, uh, aggregation. Uh, so the some of the elements of the Indo-Pacific Regional uh, Treaty are going. Uh, we spoke about with the different uh, with the different ambassadors, uh, most specifically with the American charge. So yes, we'll be involved in that. House Majority Leader has said that. Um, I'm sorry. House Majority Leader Rombales has said that. Okay, um, I'm sorry. I'm really. Hello, sir. House Majority Leader Rombales has said that um, a stimulus measure is among your top priority legislation. Yeah. Congress, sir. Sir, may we know, sir, if you think that the government still has funds to, to fund uh, another stimulus uh, package, and then, sir, uh, given that the 90 percent of the 2022 budget is already been disbursed to various agencies. Yes, uh, there, there are slight dis there are slight differences because although it has been dispersed, uh, uh, not all of it has been spent. So meron pa tayong breathing room, pero konti na lang. Uh, and so that's why we will have to look uh, to the new budget, the budget for 2023, which is presently being written. Uh, we have to look at, at that to... Um, to find sufficient funds for the things that we want to do because it's uh, basically uh, move some public expenditure away from non-investment expenditures to more investment-led uh, uh, expenditures, uh, again, to revitalize, to really 
retool the economy. So you're also open to open selling government assets such as Malaya and a portion of Manila Bay as proposed by Congressman Salcedo to pay for the country's debt? I'm always very wary of selling government assets. So as a matter of principle, I'd rather not. Uh, so, yes. Sir, just a follow-up. How do you think the Philippines will benefit from the end of Pacific economic framework? Well, it's going to be because now, as I said, the survival and the stability of the global economy or even just the regional economy is going to depend on the partnerships we make with other countries. And that's why that's going to be very important. We have to open as much of the economy as we can to trade. And that's where these uh, kind of treaties come in. Okay, thank you.